Hi everybody, welcome to another YouTube video. You can see behind me we've got another solar PV system. This one is made up of 12 SunTech 405 watt panels, which is about a 4.8 kilowatt peak. We've got a solar edge system with solar edge inverter. We've got an alpha battery system, a monster at 27 kilowatt hours, and a Zappi EV charger to go along with the customer's already installed Rolex. So we've got a lot going on in this video. So yeah, let's have a little look. So what we're going to do with this video is we're going to split it into two parts. The first part we're going to cover the solar PV and some of the internal electrics with the inverter and the components and then the solar edge app and then on the second part we're going to cover the alpha ESS battery and the mine Zappi. We all know how much you love listening to a Yorkshireman talk about renewable energy systems, but we're not going to subject you to over an hour's worth of it. So this is part one of the video and we'll do a link for part two. So since we're out in the garden, we might as well start with probably the most important part of the full installation, the part that is generating that power. And that's obviously these, you'll have seen these <laughs> a lot on our channel. So here we've got 12 405 watt SunTech solar panels. So that is a kilowatt peak so a maximum generation of 4.86 kilowatts. So if all the conditions are right, the most that we can generate is 4.86 kilowatts. So that all feeds back down into the garage, which we'll go to in a minute, back to the five kilowatt solar edge inverter. So on the back of each one of these panels, we've got a little solar edge optimizer, which optimizes each individual panel, uh, making it as efficient as it can be. You can see here we've also got, or you may not be able to see because it is very discreet, we've got some bird protection as well. So that's a meshing which stops any birds getting underneath those panels, creating hot spots with their nests, just creating a nuisance through them scratching around underneath the panels and doing all sorts of things underneath the panels. So that's quite an important part of this installation um, as we are in a bit of a more rural area with a lot of trees and things around. So you can see these are in a bit of like a, a pyramid layout just because of the, the hips on the roof. The customer is exploring possibility of doing some work to the property and maybe adding a gable end on one or both of the sides, which would then allow us to extend the size of the array. So that's a little bit why we've installed a five kilowatt solar edge inverter rather than say a four kilowatt or something like that, because we want to give this system a bit of headroom for if the customer wants to expand it in the future. Also, we just want to generate as much as we can. So we've got the DNO approval for the battery at a five kilowatt solar edge inverter. So we might as well install one. So that is the, the panels. I think they look really good there and a really good uh, layout for this type of roof. We might as well head now into the garage and we'll have a look at the rest of it. So welcome to the workshop or the garage. <laughs> so you can see behind me here, this is where the majority of our kit is now. So we've got, if we work along what we've got, we've got our five kilowatt solar edge inverter just behind me here. So single phase, normal domestic supply, single phase inverter there. We've then got our DC isolator just here. Um, so then we've got our cable here which comes from the from the roof and that is what is bringing our power down from our panels that comes in and then through these DC cables here into the inverter so that's how we get our power from our panels we've then got our um, main consumer unit just here for our renewables system so this is what we call our renewables DB and in here we've got our alpha battery supply which I'll have a look in a minute We've got our solar PV supply, which comes out of here through this ATI isolator, through this generation meter. So that generation meter is logging everything that we're generating. The inverter does that anyway, but it's an MCS requirement, so we put it in. <laughs> and then out of that, we come out through this flex cable and into our inverter. So you can see it's all stuffed up in this sort of top right corner of this garage, uh, meaning that it doesn't impact on any usable space in this, in this garage at all. So if we keep working along, we've then got a, a socket just here, uh, which is this one here, which we've basically put in 
for the mileage equipment just because we've got the hub out here which needs to be plugged in so we just put a, a socket in there for that we've then got uh, the alpha meters which are these two here which are doing all the calculations for the alpha system so what we're generating and what the home is either importing or exporting so all that's nice and tidy and installed in in that db just there we've then got our backup db which we'll go into a little bit more detail when we look at the alpha side of the system but these two circuits here are powered um, in the event of a power cut so uh, we just put that in there to uh, to, to to give us the protection we need for eggs for our uh, two circuits so we've got the upstairs sockets and we've got the house lighting as well that's all in there like i mentioned we've got our two my energy pieces of equipment there as well for the zappy because we've installed a zappy on this job as well which again we'll go into a little bit more detail as we as we work through the video but if we stick with the, the solar edge side of the system, we've got our internet connection just here. So that comes in, so we've got a hardwired internet connection to try and give it as, as stable a connection as, as we possibly can. We've got our nice blue light, which is what we want to see. That means the system's online. Our solid green light for an indication that it's actually generating power, which is obviously very important. You see there's no screen on these. If you watch some of our videos, you know that there's no screen by now but all of that is monitored via smartphones desktops apps everything like that to check what's actually happening in the system also the alpha will monitor what the solar is doing as well so we've got loads of different points that we can monitor what's happening in the system the last thing to go well one of the last things to go through is we've also got our alpha isolator which is going over to our alpha battery to give us local isolation for the battery system. This home also had a Rolex EV charger. That was historic, that's been installed for a while. Uh, we actually brought it up to regulations, to current regulations, and installed basically a MATI open uh, protection device. If we lose the uh, supply neutral, it means that connection to that charge point will will basically be disconnected so that that charge point is safe. The Zappi that we have installed here already has that built in. So it's just that because the Rolex is an older charger. Uh, so we brought that up to regulations for the customer as well. So I'm really pleased how this one turned out because like I say, the customer's obviously got a bit of a workshop here and she didn't want any of the workspace kind of uh, taking up if we could help it. So that's why we've put everything up out the way and on this on this wall here you can see we've got our fire board so 12 mil hardy backer board for everyone asking and uh, that's a cementus board that has uh, been fire tested and everything so we know that, that is heat resistant we split the tails for this so we can see we've got some handy blocks just there split the tails and that's how we've got the power to our board and that's pretty much it on this little section you can see again <laughs> the customer uh, doesn't have to worry about uh, it getting really any d dirty from any of their of their workings because it's up out of the way it's not going to get bashed it's not going to get knocked and i think it sits there really well so like in the last video we did um, we're wanting to add more information about the cost of the system the spec and everything else so we're going to put that next to me just here so what we've installed we have installed this the cost of the equipment has been this and it took us this long to install all the equipment. So we've had permission from the customer to share that information. So hopefully that'll help inform you guys as to how much this sort of equipment would cost. One thing to bear in mind is this was at the start of 2022 when this was installed. So prices have increased since that through the energy crisis and shortage of stock and everything else. But it gives you a bit of a, an idea as to the sort of cost that this, this sort of equipment can cost. So hopefully that helps. So in the world of YouTube, these videos sort of knock around forever in the YouTube ether. Um, so it's actually the 1st of December 2022 at the minute. And we originally installed this equipment in April 2022 as well. So it's been going for the majority of the summer. So through this video, when we got onto the app, you will be able to actually see some real world data as to how it's been performing and yeah, give you some information rather than it being the day of us finishing it, which hopefully should be interesting. So as I mentioned, it's December. So we've had a, I've had a bit of a wardrobe change and I've got a cup of tea because it is absolutely freezing here this morning. Poor old Ellis who's filming this has got icicles coming down from his nose. So he's gonna have a quick swig of this. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna go through the app for the Solar Edge system and the uh, Alpha battery system. So let's get into it. So this is the Solar Edge app. 
so we've got the top left we've got 4.86 kilowatt peaks that's the maximum amount of solar pv that we've installed it's saying it's five degrees out here in leeds which i think is very optimistic for how it feels at the minute current power we've got 370 watts so it's not doing bad to be fair what is quite a cold and dull day We've then got the amount of watt hours, it's not quite done a kilowatt hour yet, uh, which is 661 watt hours. So when that hits a thousand, that'll be one kilowatt hour. It's only about um, about half past 10, quite well, quarter to 11 in the morning. So it's not uh, too far through the day. We've then got how much it's done this month, which is the 1st of December. So uh, it's done the same as it has done today. And then we've got the lifetime. So we've got 3.82 uh, megawatt hours that's 3820 kilowatt hours this year and that equates to a saving um, if that energy is all used by the property which most of it is of 1360 pounds um, so we'll go through that, that a little bit more in detail uh, further on through the video but <clears throat> we can see if i move this today this is how the system has performed today so we can see again we're only in watts down this side axis here i know there's a mathematical term i can't remember if it's x or y but down the side axis there and you see we've peaked at just under 500 watts today so it's it's fairly low but it's most probably covering all the base consumption which we may be able to see a bit clearer on the alpha app in a minute so we can then change the time period that we're looking at data from so we're on week now so we can see on each day uh, leading up to today how much we've generated so if we look at the 29th we can see there that it's done 1.7 kilowatt hours if we look at the 25th we can see we've done 4.32 so it's all fairly low but we are in the back end of the year do a month we can then see again it's just going to have today but we can see this today we've done the just shot of 700 watt hours but if we look back at november which is obviously a full month we've done see the top system production 112 kilowatt hours just over and you can see that's quite varied throughout that month <clears throat> So you can see there on the 4th, we've done 17.56 kilowatt hours, but then on this one here, we've done 320 watt hours. So it really does vary depending on the, on the weather, which sounds like a bit of an obvious statement, but that's, that's, how it, that's how it works. So then if we go to year, we can then see month by month what we've generated here. And so now at this side axis, we've got um, kilowatt hours. So you can see in, we've got uh, the different months here. So, We've got uh, August, September, We've got all the months basically that we can go through. You can see we haven't got January, February, March because it wasn't installed then. So we're not quite completely through the year yet. And we can see at this top, we've got 3.7 kilowatt hours. So year to year then we'll be able to scroll along and see the difference uh, throughout. We've also got billing here as well, which is helpful um, as well. But, uh, but yeah, we, we've, we can see all that information there. So if we go back, that's that and then we've got the bottom we've got comparative energy so we've got we can then compare but when we go further on through the lifetime of the system at the minute we've only got 2022 data which is this in, in the green just at the bottom of this page here uh, but then 2023 may be in blue so then we can start to compare month by month quarter by quarter and year by year so um, when it when we hit january <clears throat> that the bar will start in a different color so we can see how the generation has compared from month to month in each year. If we go to the layout, we can see we've got our panels here and we're on the daily tab, which you see in the top left. So we can see what the solar has generated today. So it's all in watt hours still, but they're all roughly at sort of 65, 62, 63 uh, watt hours. But if we change that to yearly, we can see there that they're all around 368, 364, 363, that top right one's 358. They're all there or thereabouts. Um, that, you know, we haven't got any panels that are massively down on each other. So they're, they're all generating slightly different amounts and that'll be, um, might even be down to the slight cleanliness of, of some of the panels, the efficiency of some of the panels, any sort of tolerances in the power output from, the, from when they were made. All of that factors into how much that panel is able to produce. So that is that, is that tab. And because there's no energy mod bus on this one, um, there's not much else to see. With with that, you can see the uh, the current power has then come back and is now 413 uh, watts. So it is going up steadily, but still, it's not gonna not gonna uh, um, power the full home on that. 
but it is probably covering the base consumption. So that is the Solar Edge app. If we had the Energy Modbus, that would start to show us import, export, and loads of other things, which we don't tend to install the standard when we've got a, something like the Alpha, because the Alpha monitors all that anyway. So we don't necessarily want to repeat um, repeat the same information at extra cost to the customer. So with this one, <clears throat> with this app, it's more really this page here, which is the um, which is the layout of the panels to make sure that all the panels are generating. There are thereabouts the same. We can also then look into um, exactly what's happening in the system with <clears throat> voltages, with power output of that panel, and we can do some further diagnostics if the customer feels that there's a problem with the system. Um, we can do that, so the Reg can do that, um, and provide a lot of support remotely, which is good for everybody, really. So that is the Solar Edge app.